So, Inquisitor, it is Inquisitor now, right? Remember that war we talked about stopping? Full of little baddies I can stick with little arrows. That's not a friggin' archdemon, is it? Draste, what does step in? I have apparently been through a lot. But yes, Corypheus was a surprise. No, a surprise would be, oh, I stepped in dog shite. No one says, oh, a Magister God monster, I'm surprised. Impossible things aren't surprises. I can't help you if you don't explain what's wrong exactly. It's got to be nonsense, doesn't it? What kind of screwed if it isn't? I mean, that Corypheus thing. A magister, right? Story is, he cracked the Golden City. But that's a hazy dream. If not, seat of the Maker, real thing. A seat needs a book, so the Maker, real thing. Fairy stories about the start and end of the world, Real things. It's too far, isn't it? I just want to plug the skyhole rubbish so I can go play. Keep calling it nonsense. That perspective will keep the Inquisition grounded. Oh, I can do that. Sure could use a few more people shouting no. We fight, the bad things go away, everyone calms down, and everything goes back to normal. A nice, well-paid normal. You're starting to not sound completely crazy. I know, scary, innit? So bring them on. But first, food. I'm starving. What a fascinating life you lead, my dear. First you fall out of the Fade, then you're attacked by an archdemon. If you wanted more public attention, you could have just held a ball. I'll talk to Josephine. Maybe we can get matching gowns before the next attack. I've got a tailor in Val Royor who can work miracles, my dear. But not those sort of miracles. You left yourself vulnerable to attack. It was a miscalculation, one that I'm sure you won't repeat. But the enemy struck a serious blow against you and the Inquisition. We must recognize that. You must. So many people are joining this fight. What if I'm only leading them to their deaths? Death is a part of war, my dear, and a part of life. We cannot escape it. Those who die for the Inquisition give their lives willingly. The alternative is to forfeit all they cherish to these horrors from the sky. Our enemy advances, Inquisitor. We must not sit idly by. Act first and teach them to fear us. You can become the leader the faithful require, but you must do it soon. This thing is not a stray puppy you can make into a pet. It has no business being here. Wouldn't you say the same of an apostate? 
Inquisitor, I wondered if Cole was perhaps a mage, given his unusual abilities. He can cause people to forget him, or even fail entirely to notice him. These are not the abilities of a mage. It seems that Cole is a spirit. It is a demon. If you prefer, although the truth is somewhat more complex. I'm not sure how much more complexity I need, Solus. Indeed, my dear. He may call it whatever he likes, but it is still a threat. In fact, his nature is not so easily defined. Speak plainly, Solas. What are we dealing with? Demons normally enter this world by possessing something. In their true form, they look bizarre, monstrous. But you claim Cole looks like a young man. Is it possession? No. He has possessed nothing and no one. And yet he appears human in all respects. Cole is unique, Inquisitor. More than that, he wishes to help. I suggest you allow him to do so. In my studies, demons either possessed something from this world or were summoned and bound. They almost never look like something you'd mistake for a person. Normally you'd be correct. But Cole has willfully manifested in human form without possessing anyone. The demons who came through the breach or through the rifts weren't possessing anything. These demons were drawn through against their will, driven mad by this world. But Cole predates the breach. From what we can tell, he has lived here for months, perhaps years. He looks like a young man. For all intents and purposes, he is a young man. It is remarkable. I should hear what Cole has to say for himself. Where is he now? If none of us remember him, he could be anywhere. Red Templars attacking a Dalish camp. The mages did what they could to stop them. Arrow through the armor, breathing through cobwebs. Throat closing, coughing as a lance through my side. Hot, white pain. Everything burns. I can't. I can't. I'm going to. I'm dying. I I'm. Dead. You're feeling their pain. It's louder this close, with so many of them. Would you like to go somewhere more comfortable? Yes, but here is where I can help. Every breath slower, like lying in a warm bath, sliding away. Smell of my daughter's hair when I kiss her goodnight. Gone. Cracked brown pain, dry. Scraping. Thirsty. Here. Thank you. It's all right. She won't remember me. You're using your powers as a spirit to help people. Yes. I used to think I was a ghost. I didn't know. I made mistakes. But I made friends, too. Then a Templar proved I wasn't real. I lost my friends. I lost everything. I learned how to be more like what I am. It made me different, but stronger. I can feel more. I can help. If you're willing, the Inquisition could use your help. Yes, helping. I help the hurt, the helpless. There's someone. Hurts, it hurts, it hurts. Someone make it stop hurting. Make her, please. The healers have done all they can. It will take him hours to die. Every moment will be agony. 
He wants mercy. Help. All right. Help him. It's all right. I want to stay. Inquisitor, I've found where the Red Templars come from. They're in full redoubt. The knights were fed Red Lyrium until they turned into monsters. Samson took over after their corruption was complete. How do you know Samson? He was a Templar in Kirkwall, until he was expelled from the Order. I knew he was an addict, but this... Red Lyrium is nothing like the Lyrium given by the Chantry. Its power comes with a terrible madness. The Red Templars swarming Haven were proof enough. We cannot allow them to gain strength. The Red Templars still require Lyrium. If we find their source, we can weaken them and their leader. I like finding the Red Templars' vulnerabilities before fighting them head on. We'll need every advantage against what courses through their veins. Caravans of Red Lyrium are being smuggled along trade roads. Investigating them could lead to where it's being mined. If you confront them, be wary. Anything connected to Samson will be well guarded. As leader of the Inquisition, you... There's something I must tell you. Whatever it is, I'm willing to listen. Right. Thank you. Lyrium grants Templars our abilities, but it controls us as well. Those cut off suffer. Some go mad, others die. We have secured a reliable source of Lyrium for the Templars here. But I no longer take it. You stopped? When I joined the Inquisition. It's been months now. Why are you doing this? After what happened in Kirkwall, I couldn't. I will not be bound to the Order or that life any longer. Whatever the suffering, I accept it. But I would not put the Inquisition at risk. I have asked Cassandra to... watch me. If my ability to lead is compromised, I will be relieved from duty. Are you in pain? I can endure it. Thank you for telling me. I respect what you're doing. Thank you, Inquisitor. The Inquisition's army must always take priority. Should anything happen, I will defer to Cassandra's judgment. What are you doing? Listening. Eyes rough, jangling armor hurts my ears, back aching, fingers too clumsy for knots. Wind cool like Aunt Eloise's pond, lips scalded as I sip, warmth blossoms, first kiss in the barn, what was his name? Tin jangle as the blood spills, Pierre's wrapped body on the wagon to the chantry, five more minutes, my fault. Can you listen to anyone's mind like you did hers? No, they have to need me. Pain, fear, sadness, guilt, anger, hurt. Things I can fix. Can you do something for her? Yes. It's okay. Nothing you did mattered. What? Who are you? They lie there, and sometimes they die, just like Pierre. You can't save them. I don't... 
I don't know who you are. Wait. That didn't work. Let me try again. You'll forget me in a minute. What are you going to do? Make her forget me. Then do it again, the right way. You can't save all of them. What? Like Pierre getting sick after you snuck out to Aunt Eloise's pond. You want it to be your fault, so there's a reason and it's not so frightening. But there is no reason. Pierre just got sick. The soldier was never going to live. It wasn't your fault. Better. She doesn't blame herself anymore? Not as much. It was bouncing around inside her, closing up into a ball of wrong. Now it's open. She'll get it out. Well done. Thank you for letting me help her. It's not how a person would do it. But it helped. That's what matters. Inquisitor, I wonder if you might help me with a delicate situation. There is an alchemical formula that I must complete, but I have been unable to obtain a critical ingredient. The heart of a snowy wyvern. I had arranged to obtain one, but the chevaliers working with me were killed in the Civil War. If I'm going to hunt down a snowy wyvern, I need you to tell me everything you know about it. They're quite rare and exceedingly dangerous. Their venom is the most potent of any wyvern. Ordinary hunters would not make the attempt. The risk is too great. You, my dear, would certainly be an equal to this monster. I didn't know you were an alchemist, Vivian. What exactly is this project you're working on? It is a special request from a member of the Council of Heralds. I am still the Imperial Court Enchanter, after all. The matter is private. That is all there is to say. I'm not a hunter. Why do you think I can help? This beast is not hunted for sport, as other women sometimes are. It is far more deadly. In the past, chevaliers have been dispatched to either kill the creatures or drive them away from villages. Since my chevaliers have fallen to political conflict, I find myself in need of someone with a martial aptitude. I'll do what I can. Thank you, my dear. I would be most grateful. I shall give the location of its lair to Cullen. Remember, my dear, I must have its heart or the potion will not work. I eagerly await your success. You're the Inquisitor. Mother never told me the Inquisitor was an elf. The ears gave me away, didn't they? No, your blood is very old. I saw it right away. Kieran, are you bothering the Inquisitor? Of course not. Did you see what's on her hand, Mother? I did see. It is time to return to your studies, little man. <laughs> My son. Never where you expect him to be, naturally. I didn't know you had a son. Why would you? I take great pains to not let my own reputation affect him in any way. To most in the Imperial Court, he's simply a quiet and well-spoken lad. Perhaps the heir of some distant family. But he goes where I go. Worry not, Inquisitor. Kieran is a curious boy, but seldom troublesome. Will his father be joining us as well? 
I have raised Kieran on my own for quite some time now, as was my preference from the start. So, tis but the two of us, Inquisitor. Your fortress is a large place, and you will scarce notice our presence. He seems like a fine young man. But not the sort one might expect a woman like me to raise? No son of mine would be raised in a marsh, bereft of contact with the outside world. His future will be difficult enough without my adding to his burden. To think, until recently this place stood decrepit, occupied only by the desperate and the lost. Now it is party to events that threaten to shake the world. I wonder if it is pleased. It sounds like you've heard of Skyhold before. This fortress was built upon the remains of a site holy to the ancient elves. They called it Tarar Salan, the place where the sky is kept. It is said that from here, they reached up to the heavens to bring them down to rest. They abandoned it, as did the humans who came after them. Bones laid upon bones, silent until your arrival. I like this place. I've made it mine. The magic in this place has seeped into the stones, protecting it from darkness. Those who let it fall to ruin did not know what they possessed. You, I think, shall do it justice. You were kind to welcome my aid, Inquisitor, even knowing as little of me as you do. I will do my best to aid your cause with all the knowledge at my disposal. This I swear to you. I appreciate whatever help you can give us. Some might think Corypheus a madman for seeking godhood. Yet one must ask what were the old gods? What secrets of theirs did the ancient magisters know? What I fear, what all should fear, is not that Corypheus believes he can succeed, tis that he actually may. I'm sorry. So am I. The names of those we lost. You must blame me for this. We all saw who attacked us. We know exactly who to blame. I keep wondering if I could have done something different. When the first of my lookouts went missing, I pulled the rest back, awaiting more information. If they'd stayed in the field, they could have bought us more time. I was afraid to lose my agents, and instead we lost Haven. You look out for your people. That's a good thing, is it? My people know their duty. They know the risks. They understand that the Inquisition may call upon them to give their lives. Our people aren't tools to be used and discarded. Your instincts were right. Their lives matter. Can we afford such sentimentality? What if Corypheus? We are better than Corypheus. So it's true. Some look to Cassandra or even me as Justinia's successor. I never thought the idea would gain momentum. Of course, with the other candidates out of the picture, Is becoming divine something you really want? <laughs> when Justinia was alive, I would have laughed at anyone who even suggested that I could be her successor. Things have changed. Still, I don't know. Restoring the Chantry will be like trying to steer a sinking vessel through a storm. No one would fault you for abandoning ship, you know. Out of the ship? And straight into the sea. You think Thedas hates mages now? If the Chantry falls, don't you think the people will blame magic? Look at all that's happened. Kirkwall's Chantry, the war, the breach. Mages are always involved. Without the Chantry to guide, that hatred will spiral out of control. No, we don't want that. And the Chantry can see that it doesn't happen. The people are sheep, Inquisitor. They need to follow. But this is a discussion for later. If Corypheus wins, finding a new divine will be the least of our problems.
Why here? Haven is familiar. It will always be important to you. We talked about that already. I sat beside you while you slept, studying the anchor. I'm glad someone was watching over me. You were a mystery. You still are. I ran every test I could imagine, searched the Fade, yet found nothing. Cassandra suspected duplicity. She threatened to have me executed as an apostate if I didn't produce results. Cassandra's like that with everyone. <laughs> yes. You were never going to wake up? How could you? A mortal sent physically through the Fade. I was frustrated, frightened. The spirits I might have consulted had been driven away by the breach. Although I wished to help, I had no faith in Cassandra, or she in me. I was ready to flee. The breach threatened the whole world. Where did you plan to go? Some place far away, where I might research a way to repair the breach before its effects reached me. I never said it was a good plan. I told myself, one more attempt to seal the rifts. I tried and failed. No ordinary magic would affect them. I watched the rifts expand and grow, resign myself to flee, and then... It seems you hold the key to our salvation. You had sealed it with a gesture. And right then, I felt the whole world change. Felt the whole world change? A figure of speech. I'm aware of the metaphor. I'm more interested in felt. You change... everything. Sweet talker. We shouldn't. It isn't right. Not even here. What do you mean, even here? Where do you think we were? This isn't real. That's a matter of debate. Probably best discussed after you... wake up. Mayor Gregory Dedrick of Crestwood is present for betraying his own constituents. He confesses that, ten years ago, he flooded Old Crestwood to kill refugees and villagers touched by the Blight. The mayor claims it was to spare the rest of Crestwood, but we only have his word. If the mayor has anything to say in his defense, let him speak. There's no cure for the Blight. But I couldn't convince anyone to leave a sick child or husband behind. So you herded the infected into one place and flooded old Crestwood? Were no innocents caught in the waters? Nearly everyone in the village had the blight, I swear it! Have mercy. I couldn't tell the survivors I'd drowned their own families to save them. I, I, I couldn't. You committed murder on Ferelden soil. Let them deal with your punishment. Send him to Denerim. He can live the rest of his life behind their bars. In prison? Maker. I should have drowned with them. First, this wasn't my idea. It is an issue born of titles and heir apparency and... Halam Shiral is having difficulty freeing trade routes formerly controlled by Duchess Florian. 
Had she been tried, her assets would be forfeit and considerable bureaucracy avoided. So they ask that we judge her. Are you serious? I did my part. She's dead. That was the time allotted for rebuttal. Her crimes negated any claim to... <sighs> Forgive me, there is an order. <clears throat> Strangely enough, something similar happened to an uncle of Emperor Leandra II. His trade routes were returned to the reigning monarch. Why don't we just follow suit? A wise choice. Thank you for making it swiftly. I'm glad you made it, Inquisitor. I fear they've already started the ritual. Blood magic, I'd wager. You can smell it. Or see the corpses. You take point. I'll guard your backs. Wait! No! Warden Commander Clarell's orders were clear. This is wrong! Remember your oath. In war, victory. In peace, vigilance. In death. I'm sorry. Sacrifice! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Find it just as I showed you. Inquisitor, what an unexpected pleasure. Lord Livius Edamond of Virantium, at your service. You are no warden. But you are. The one Clarell let slip. And you found the Inquisitor and came to stop me. Shall we see how that goes? I've killed demons before. If I have to kill a few Warden Mages as well, so be it. You may have to kill a few, yes. Wardens, hands up. Hands down. Corypheus has taken their minds. They did this to themselves. You see, the calling had the Wardens terrified. They looked everywhere for help. Even to Vinter. Yes, and since it was my master who put the calling into their little heads, we in the Venatori were prepared. I went to Clarell full of sympathy, and together we came up with a plan. Raise a demon army, march into the deep roads, and kill the old gods before they wake. So you manipulated the Wardens to build an army of demons for Corypheus? Just so. Sadly for the Wardens, the binding ritual I taught their mages has a side effect. They are now my master's slaves. This was a test. Once the rest of the Wardens complete the ritual, the army will conquer Thedas. So Corypheus influenced the Wardens and made them do this ritual? <laughs> made them? No! Everything you see here, the blood sacrifices to bind the demons, the Wardens did it of their own free will. Fear is a very good motivator, and they were very afraid. You should have seen Clarell agonize over the decision. Burdens of command, I suppose. Why would the Wardens try to kill the old gods? A blight happens when Darkspawn find an old god and corrupt it into an archdemon. 
If someone fought through the deep roads and killed the old gods before they could be corrupted, poof, no more blights, ever. The Wardens sacrificed their lives and saved the world. That's madness. For all we know, killing the old gods could make things even worse. Well then, it's a good thing I'm taking this demon army off their hands. Why would Clarell risk using demons? Demons need no food, no rest, no healing. Once bound, they will never retreat, never question orders. They are the perfect army to fight through the deep roads. Or across Olé. Now they are bound to my master. Do you really want to see the world fall to the Blight? What do you get out of this? The Elder One commands the Blight. He is not commanded by it, like the mindless Darkspawn. The Blight is not unstoppable or uncontrollable. It is simply a tool. As for me, while the Elder One rules from the Golden City, we, the Venatori, will be his god-kings here in the world. That's all I needed to know. Oh, please. The Elder One showed me how to deal with you in the event you're foolish enough to interfere again. That mark you bear, the anchor that lets you pass safely through the veil, you stole that from my master. He's been forced to seek other ways to access the Fade. When I bring him your hand, his gratitude will be... went well. You were correct. Through their ritual, the mages are slaves to Corypheus. And the Warden Warriors? Oh, of course. It's not real blood magic until someone gets sacrificed. Eremond lied to the Wardens. They were trying to prevent future blights. With blood magic and human sacrifice. The Wardens were wrong, Hawk, but they had their reasons. All blood mages do. Everyone has a story they tell themselves to justify bad decisions. And it never matters. In the end, you are always alone with your actions. I believe I know where the Wardens are, Your Worship. Eremond fled in that direction. There's an abandoned Warden fortress that way. Adamant. Good thinking. The Warden and I will scout out Adamant and confirm that the other Wardens are there. We'll meet you back at Skyhold. Good book. Ah! Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, because I suddenly went blind. Oh, that. Just reports from Commander Cullen. You're an excellent liar. It's of no interest to you, I'm certain. It's a book. I can see that. It's one of Varric's tales. Swords and Shields, the latest chapter. So you like to read? What's wrong with that? It's frivolous. There are more important things for me to do. That's just her favorite. Nobody asked you, Tevinta. <laughs> I couldn't finish the last one you lent me. I actually feel dumber for having tried. It's literature. Smutty literature. Whatever you do, don't tell Varric. Why not? I think Varric would be pleased to have another fan. Pleased? Yes, that's one word for it. <sighs> They're terrible. And magnificent. And this one ends in a cliffhanger. I know Varric is working on the next. He must be. 
Pretend you don't know this about me. Something wrong with your tea? It is tea. I detest this stuff. But this morning, I need to shake the dreams from my mind. I may also need a favor. You just have to ask. One of my oldest friends has been captured by mages, forced into slavery. I heard the cry for help as I slept. When your friend was captured, how did he... she... It. It? My friend is a spirit of wisdom. Unlike the spirits clamoring to enter our world through the rifts, it was dwelling quite happily in the Fade. It was summoned against its will, and wants my help to gain its freedom and return to the Fade. I thought spirits wanted to find their way into this world. Some do, certainly. Just as many Orlesian peasants wish they could journey to exotic Ravain. But not everyone wants to go to Ravain. My friend is an explorer, seeking lost wisdom and reflecting it. It would happily discuss philosophy with you, but it had no wish to come here physically. Do you have any idea what the mages want with your friend? No. It knows a great deal of lore and history, but a mage could learn that simply by speaking to it in the Fade. It is possible that they seek information it does not wish to give, and intend to torture it. All right. Let's go get your friend. Thank you. I got a sense of my friend's location before I awoke. I'll mark it on our map. Adam and Fortress has stood against the Darkspawn since the time of the Second Blight. Fortunately for us, that means it was built before the age of modern siege equipment. A good trebuchet will do major damage to those ancient walls. And thanks to our Lady Ambassador, Lady Cyril of Jader was pleased to lend the Inquisition her sappers. They've already delivered the trebuchets. That is the good news. None of that accounts for the Warden summoning a giant demon army. That is the bad news. The Inquisition forces can breach the gate, but if the Wardens already have their demons... I found records of Adamant's construction. There are choke points we can use to limit the field of battle. That's good. We may not be able to defeat them outright, but if we cut off reinforcements, we can carve you a path to Warden Commander Clorel. Taking this fortress is going to get a lot of good soldiers killed. Our soldiers know the risks, Inquisitor, and they know what they're fighting for. It'll be hard fought, no way around it, but we'll get that gate open. It's also possible that some Wardens may be sympathetic to our cause. The warriors may be willing to listen to reason, though I doubt they will turn against Clorel directly. The mages, however, are slaves to Corypheus. They will fight to the death. We've built the siege engines and readied our forces, Inquisitor. Give the word, and we march on Adamant. <laughs> 